that uh, I was informed that uh, quite a number of uh, people couldn't make it uh, today because of prior arrangement uh, and then uh, inevitable circumstances prevented them. So uh, I also need to make a uh, very important announcement today. Our next class is uh, November 2nd and 3rd. I apologize to you and that uh, I wouldn't be able to make it, so I have some alternative arrangements. Why? Uh, you may not know that I'm a, a liver patient so since 2014. Once I went into a coma also in Sri Lanka, so that uh, my doctors in London, UK, uh, where I have uh, access to free healthcare in Canada and UK. So, uh, I, in fact, I was supposed to make it last month, but I couldn't uh, make it uh, due to other obligations. So that uh, uh, for this year, the only time available to them for me is that weekend, so that uh, it's critical that I attend that uh, biopsy and session and they will see what kind of treatments I would uh, uh, need, so that uh, as a result of the liver condition also at times I feel uh, tired, uh, extremely tired at times, uh, so that is when, uh, so if I push uh, uh, that class time forward and you still, I assume that you wouldn't be able to make it. Uh, I cannot have that on the weekend before because that weekend is our katina or annual ropes of ceremony in my own place so that uh, uh, so I can escape that as well. If I do, it would be like a wedding without the bride and the groom. <laughs> uh, so then, so I have to attend that too. And the second alternative I would like to have is that uh, I would uh, like to uh, uh, send you a uh, uh, pre pre midterm open book. Uh, exam that you can do at home that we can. Remember, it's a uh, uh, pre midterm one, and for that, would include some uh, important questions, uh, sample questions that you would answer that would uh, that you will see in the final exams next year. So, I need your opinion on that. Which one would you like to do? Let me know. I need your opinion. Yes. I'm so sorry, I apologize, but this is um, how to say under unknowable circumstances. I have to make it to London for my treatment. So, what would you like to suggest? Would, would you like to have another session, or maybe I wonder whether it could be very difficult? Because usually here in the West, you schedule everything well in advance. Uh, so, then they can talk because yeah. <coughs> what about a substitute teacher? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's, uh, actually I thought about that too. The last night, uh, up until midnight, I was thinking about the teacher. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm like good with it. Yeah, very. Because I try to get one, uh, two monks and one lay professor in California, but they they have an arrangement. Especially this is the from October uh, full moon to November full moon is called the month of rope offering. 
So all the monastics are busy traveling worldwide, and they are having their own ceremonies. That uh, so uh, so she'll be here. You know, I think yes. I think Master can give talks too. He has a lot about history too. Okay. Okay. Really? Master will be back. Okay, he'll be back. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. I would like that. If Master could give a talk. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay yes. Yeah. We'll I, I will talk to him. Yeah. Yeah, but we still have the midterm, right? We we are going to have midterm during the weekends too, right, Ali? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one is for midterm, and the other day is the talk. The talk, yeah, right, yeah. So I can send the midterm papers mm -hmm. to you. Right, yeah. By snail oh. mail? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get it. By post? <laughs> By post. Yes. You cannot email? Yeah, email. I won't email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in, in many respects, I don't trust the internet. <laughs> Even though I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> yes? I'm not sure of. Bhante Kusala's schedule as well, but you could also talk about maybe just having two Pali weekends and then we could have two Buddhist oh, history no, weekends. Uh, the mm -hmm. air ticket is already, we already put, uh, purchased the tickets for both. Oh, okay, so those are already on Yeah, purchase. and Bhante Kusala has his own schedule. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so the midterm the mid would be on Sunday, right? And that's a, a take home. Hmm? The midterm. The is that the pre midterm or the midterm? Yeah. No. If I now that I don't make it, and then assuming that nobody else would make it, uh, I would like to have a, a pre a pre midterm email to you so that you can answer. But now again, I don't need to be here to have the midterm. Somebody. She will monitor that, uh, invigilate that. Yeah. So, but anyway, I will email you some some points anyway. When I go back this time, I'll email you some key points that you may need uh, for your midterm. And midterm is going to be, uh, I think, uh, it's thirty questions, I guess. So how much is the the percentage from midterm is 40, I guess. Do you have, do you have like other mm. small quizzes? Yeah, I even have a few small questions that you answer. Multiple choice plus a, a few more questions that you are not supposed to do long answers, just short answers. Uh, what matters is not the length. Uh, of the ants, but uh, how uh, how precise the answer is, like short. You know, you know about exams, right? Yeah. Sometimes some students uh, answer use like few pa multiple pages for one answer, but they still get C minus. Whereas some only fill one page, but they get A plus. Yeah. It's like a big soup. Uh, without much ingredients and vegetables and meat and stuff, but it's all water. Right? So, uh, so it's not the quantity. So when I go back this time, I will email you some key points about all about the midterm exams, how, how many marks you get, the structure and everything. Right? And you will get that answer by a Friday night, this Friday night. And then in that case, who this, uh, who's that lady? She said, uh, Kitty? Kitty, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess, oh, Master, yeah. she said, Master would teach, yeah. Yeah, the Master is uh, well versed in all Buddhist traditions. Uh, so then I will personally request him as well. Yeah, yeah and then you have to send uh, the, the substitute teachers about the course content that you want to yeah. intend to teach for that weekend. That weekend, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about okay. so? Uh, and how about the midterm? Do they so when they sit in the class to mm -hmm. take the midterm? Yes. How many hours do they? Uh, I think uh, given the number of questions, it's gonna be it's two hours. Two hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's two hours. No breaks, please. Sorry. Okay. And you'll be on Saturday.
Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning? Uh, morning would be morning would be better. But I wonder whether anyone would uh, arrive late. But uh, towards the yeah, afternoon everyone would feel like kind of lethargic, you know, tired. And your, your, your memory, your brain slows down. Uh, so, it would be Sunday morning. So, so I will courier you, I will send you the papers in the mail. So, any questions, anything else about that? So, Sunday morning would be the midterm. And then uh, the Shifu, a uh, master, would teach them. I will ask him. I will personally invite him. So that uh, now that I have the article totally booked, I will make talk to United Airlines and make some arrangement. Probably I can use that. I can reserve that for. Um, but that we will take care of that. Okay. Maybe we can move that to next semester. Next semester, yeah. Mm. So uh, that being said. So far, I know for sure. Uh, usually, it happens that when when you write your thesis, uh, when you start your course of study and anything, at times uh, it's not the direction that you uh, anticipated uh, being on. That you always uh, end up being somewhere else. So that. Um, so I had a uh, very rigorous coursework in my head that I had to relax it because being a diploma course, right, it has to be, uh, it, it doesn't have to be purely academic. What really matters is the knowledge. When, when, uh, when, when coursework is like dry academic, uh, full of theories, but uh, there must be space uh, for you to apply knowledge into your daily life as well. So that's why, lucky me, I had the authority from the university to make any adjustments. Uh, so that uh, I changed lots of uh, uh, themes also. And then again, given, uh, given the focus, we are supposed to uh, study everything within a very uh, narrow uh, space, like it is the historical background of Buddhism. It's not uh, the history of Buddhism, but uh, historical uh, background to Buddhism. Two different things. Uh, so that's why so far we have touched upon different uh, areas. I mean, the pre-Buddhist Buddhist Indian society. Today, this morning, we are going to talk about uh, uh, let me get that term Uh, 
even religions, uh, even world religions are divided into two categories when you go on that line, theistic and non-theistic. Especially in the West, Buddhists are called atheists, right? Which is a problematic term as well, not all Buddhists are athe atheists. Uh, so, uh, uh, because Buddhists also believe in some kind of divinity. The, the only, only difference when it comes to uh, belief in divinity in Buddhism is that Buddhists don't uh, fundamentally believe in uh, the idea of creation, creator God, but they do believe in other gods, not in singular capital G God, but in uh, plural simple G gods, uh, simple G gods in plural, like deities. Uh, not capital G God, but uh, simple G gods in plural, deities. So the Buddh Buddhists also believe in divinity. They are divine beings. The only difference is in, in, in certain, uh, on, on the popular level, Buddhists in general believe, see Buddha as uh, Buddha as someone with the uh, divine characteristics. Usually it happens in any religion. Even if uh, the founder or the first teacher of a particular religion uh, refuses to be identified as divine, over time, right, centuries later, if that founder or the religious leader would still, uh, it's a living personality, uh, would get surprised by his own followers. Why? Because he is now being recognized as divine. It happens in Jainism as well, and Jainism also. Uh, in modern day Jainism, some Jains uh, see their guru, uh, Mahavira, as a divine being. In Buddhism too, uh, as a personal, uh, uh, personal speaking, I know in, in academic terms and in, uh, in general terms, uh, Buddha, Buddha is a human being, Buddha was a human being. But in my prayers, in my spiritual practice, I have difficulty in perceiving Buddha as a human being. Actually, Buddha, Buddha himself explained that uh, Buddha is human, he's a human being, but he is not a normal human being. He is an extraordinary uh, human being. This is the word he used in Pali. Now, Acharya Manusa is Pali. Ashare Manushya, Sanskrit. See, I, every time possible I try uh, to come up with both terms so that so as for you to have a sense of sense that uh, there's no much difference between Pali and Sanskrit. So, so Acharya Manusya. Uh, when Buddha introduced himself, he said, I am human, but maybe it's this Acharya Manusya. So Manusya, Manusya is human. Um, so, in fact, uh, the term man in English comes from the Sanskrit word man, to be human, man. Uh, so, Acharya uh, literally means uh, 
miraculous. So, acharya, miraculous. So, in layman in layman's terms, in general terms, it is extraordinary. Man, extraordinary, extraordinary man. So that is what acharya manasa means. Man, extraordinary. So, acharya manasa. Acharya is acharya or miraculous. Miraculous. So, acharya manasa is extraordinary man. And there's something else is way outside of this. It's, it's, it's not pertaining to this class not as a term. You know, uh, when you compare Buddhism and Christianity, lots of uh, people who are very sympathetic to both religions, just like me, I like all the religions. I always, I don't, I don't debate uh, with people from other faiths. Rather, I would see instead I see the parallels so that I could see middle grounds. Finally, we have on daily basis, we have nothing to do with uh, metaphysical questions, right? Meta metaphysics. But we need to be, we need to be able to you make you good use of, use of religious beliefs in a way that they help us to be happy on daily life. Right? So, according to uh, uh, both Buddhists and Christians, uh, so uh, Christ, Christ is uh, the uh, um, anthropomorphic God, and Buddha is a theopsychic man. These two terms, always, I love these two terms, anthropomorphic. So you know, anthropo, anthropo means human, morphic means to manifest. Uh, God who manifest in human God. That's anthropomorphic God. He is God, but at the same time, He is human, given the way He appears in the world. And theopsychic man, Buddha is a man, but in theopsychic, psychic means mentally, psychologically, theo, divine. So Buddha is human uh, in body, physically, He is human. Mentally, he is divine. Of Christ, Jesus, uh, physically, uh, he is uh, so uh, human again. But he is God too. So those are two terms. Uh, so when it comes to Buddhism as humanism, it would always be good. Uh, would be good to start. Looking at the Buddha as someone who is theopsychic man, Buddha could be recognized as divine, but he is not uh, uh, divine divine. He is not divine quote unquote, but he is human, and then he transforms his mind into one uh, that is way beyond uh, other human beings. Hence, Acharya Manasa. Any questions about that? In case I didn't clarify enough? Do you want me to write down those two terms? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, theosychic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they turn into right. Allahs or Pavanas. That's right, yeah. Indriya Pavana, yes. Yeah. 
And then he also mentioned the That's really interrelated with this, right. yeah, right. Divine eye he also mentioned, right? Exactly, yeah, divine eye, yeah. Mm -hmm. All the divine. And in a way that uh, through meditation we could elevate ourselves to something that that is teased, that is divine. Uh, our psychic body, not our physical body. Universally, 
you begin to, on the popular level, you begin to see you were the founder of that religion or the teacher or the guru whosoever who founded that, discovered, discovered or is discovered as divine. So that is from any religion. For example, in, in, in China, in China, Chinese uh, bureaucracy is modeled on uh, Confucianism. So it's more like uh, Confucius was, uh, he's, uh, he was, uh, uh, and he was a teacher, but not, uh, not uh, how to say, religious or spiritual teacher, but he was a social reformer. Uh, but again, within Taoism also, you see uh, uh, secular Taoism as founded by, uh, I mean, as it was at the earliest form, and also you see spiritual Taoism. Uh, sorry, uh, Confucianism, spiritual Confucianism and secular Confucianism. Confucius is also regarded as a uh, so as extraordinary because that's what, that's what happens. For example, you you become the founder of your own religion one day. I mean, let's say you refuse to become refuse to call your teaching or your belief your uh, your idea divine or theistic and or reject that. Uh, if you live few more centuries in the same body and then you would see that your future adherents, your followers who, who are born few, few centuries later from, from now on and would uh, see you as divine. That's quite natural. That is, the, that is the, the pattern of transformation as we call it. The pattern of transformation when it comes to religion. So then again, so uh, Buddha is considered uh, 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 extraordinary. And then I think, I think you may know the story. One story is that uh, soon after his enlightenment, it is said that through his divine eye, he thought of uh, helping uh, his friends and gurus who were with him during his uh, struggle for enlightenment during the last six years, six years before his enlightenment, uh, so that uh, he saw that most of his teachers were gone. Then he identified, then he saw uh, his five uh, friends who would be, who would later be identified as the group of five monks and who were the, his first five disciples. And then he wanted to see, and then he knew that they were far away from where he was right now. And that's why he embarked upon a long journey on foot in search of uh, uh, his five friends and all. And so that he wanted to go and share his uh, enlightenment with them. And on his way, he met someone, Upaka uh, by name. And then uh, he was, uh, he practiced uh, a kind of religion called Ajivaka uh, religion. Ajivakas were, they were a kind of uh, uh, ascetics. Uh, always there were debates, more debates between Ajivakas and uh, Buddhists. Yes. That's interesting. I never thought of mm -hmm. that Buddha had friends. Mm -hmm. you, you, I mean, in the sense That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Know, yeah. So I think of detachment all the time, not being into But he had friends. He had friends. Right? Yeah, he did. He did have friends. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, being uninvited, he would still visit. Uh, non-Buddhist, I mean, uh, other religious groups because it was not others who came to him, mostly. It was him, it was he who went to others. And then, uh, so that he volunteered. He voluntarily uh, visited other groups. And they, for, for, the, for that simple reason, uh, they had lots of respect to Buddha. And when he was approaching, everybody would stop their debate, arguments, and they would be silent in order to 
as a mark for respect to him and they would welcome him and then they would give him a suitable seat uh, and then so probably then uh, they would ask him to take over and continue the dialogue. So he still stayed close with his mother <coughs> in later years and his son. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Friends. yeah, and he visited his kingdom and that's when, because his uh, biological mother passed uh, seven days after his birth and then he would he would adopted by his stepmother who was none other than his mother's own biological sister that the king married, so the daughter married, and he was his uh, surrogate mother and then she is the one who adopted him. Even uh, and then uh, by the time uh, Hajapati, Hajapati uh, her name, she has her own son because they were born uh, uh, at the same pretty much at the same time. So that uh, she would Ajapati would uh, breastfeed uh, uh, Siddhartha despite the fact that she had to breastfeed her own son. And so that's when then later Ajapati would be the founder of uh, Bhikkhuni or the female Buddhist order. And then he would ordain his uh, only son as well. Uh, so that uh, and then uh, when his father was at that bed, and he traveled to see him and he preached and he said that uh, uh, so his uh, father in the second stage of enlightenment uh, that is the one straight uh, uh, level of enlightenment next semester we would uh, discuss uh, those things right here and even though right now at times things that I explain may not make sense or uh, it would make sense when you study the Buddhism course next semester because this, because this is simply the background we don't really deconstruct the Buddhist terms at this time. Yes. And it's teaching to Ananda too about that. Ananda, yeah, Ananda, yes. Ananda was, yes. That, that was uh, uh, his step-brother, step, uh, Ananda. But saying that friendship is the whole of the path. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It, there was a, the friendship was samsaric, a past life connection. So it was his uh, Devadatta. Uh, Yashodara, who was Buddha's wife before, before, before when he was a lay person. And then, so that the Devadatta, the Buddha's arch enemy, and then who, who was a monk, and then he was the one who tried to kill the Buddha. Because and then so, so he assumed that he would be able to become the Buddha by killing the Buddha. To him it was like uh, like uh, warfare, right? So they can invade the kingdom and take the king, king by hostage, you kill him and then so that you, you become the king. That's how Buddha would. Uh, becoming the Buddha was something like to him. So that's why his, uh, most of his key, uh, key family members also got ordained. So, so that then he was, by the way then, now Buddha was now on a long journey. On his way, uh, he met uh, someone who was uh, who was an RG worker? As I said, RG workers are uh, you come up with RG workers very often in the Buddhist canon, and there were frequent uh, debates uh, rather than dialogues uh, between Buddhists and RG workers. There were clashes between them always. Uh, so Upaka was one RG worker, and he met, and uh, so when. When they when uh, when they met each other, uh, so the Adi Vaka Upaka told to himself, this young man who is a monk looks very uh, pleasant and magnificent. He's such a magnificent personality. I wonder whether I wonder what he is. Then he asked, friend, uh, you, you are magnificent. Your radiance uh, is marvelous, incredible. And then are you uh, uh, Brahma? Meaning, are you a god? He said, no, I'm not. Then, are you a powerful yaksha or demon? No, I'm not. Then, are you a, <coughs> any other supernatural being? No, I'm not. Are you a manusha? Meaning, are you a human being? He said, no, I'm not. Then, what was his answer? He said, I am the Buddha. I am the Buddha. So, why? Being human, why did he why why did he not call himself human at that point? That is that is a theological question. 
actually always uh, uh, Buddhist theological lessons or the Buddhological lessons, you always try. Personally, when I teach Buddhology, Buddhist theology, I start with that story. Why did Buddha answer? Why did Buddha say that he, he should have he should have said uh, he was uh, human, for sure he was human, but because of extraordinary nature. He didn't, by calling himself, by not identifying, not introducing himself to be human, he didn't, he didn't reject that he was uh, human. Instead, and that he wanted to say, Buddha is human. But Buddha is essentially a human being, but uh, he is different as human beings is way different than other human beings. I feel like he also is careful when he tears on like ultimate reality and conceptual reality. Exactly. Because right. it's on that ultimate level, it's like that's there's right. Nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Like conceptually. Exactly. To say that you're nothing yeah. is the same as saying you're Buddha. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And most people don't understand that. So conceptual reality is manifest to our naked eyes, our na our sense faculties. We can uh, so we can grasp very easily. Whereas the absolute reality, absolute reality cannot be grasped through our sense faculties. Why? There's nothing to be grasped. There's nothing to be grasped. As it's that's different than it is when you see through. When you go through uh, the conceptual re reality themselves. And then we'll see finally in the ultimate analysis, you see there's nothing uh, permanent, nothing substantial left of all the conceptual realities, and so that uh, nothing, not, nothing permanent in that. And that very realization is called enlightenment. So it always it requires lots of description. There's no single answer uh, to a question: What is ultimate reality? We have answers in abundance to a question, to the question what uh, uh, conceptual reality is. Whereas we are unable to answer, even Buddha himself uh, had difficulty answering uh, to a question what uh, uh, absolute reality is. It's ineffable, difficult to express by means of words. Ineffable. It's not ineffable, it's, it's ineffable, it cannot be. So that then what happened? That's, so that's the answer. And then what what was Upaka's response? Maybe mm -hmm. that was his answer. He didn't get that. But later in his life he came back. Uh, why did he? Because given the topic, I think it's good to share that part of the story as a second episode. And then uh, he was someone who was spiritually confused. And later, and he would confess to that. And a few years later, he got fed up with his uh, spiritual life, and he thought well, he wanted to go back to lay life. And then uh, he met this beautiful girl, who was a hunter's daughter. And then so that, uh, and later he had difficulty. He had lived his, you know. Uh, he had lived as a spiritual person, he lived his uh, life in comfort up to that moment. He, he, was, he wasn't, he didn't know what uh, the lay culture was. He didn't know how to, how hard the lay life would be. And then his uh, wife would uh, wake him up early morning to go to, uh, to the forest and collect firewood and help his father for hunting. And then he would, wouldn't be able to have much freedom in his life. And so that because as a hunter's wife, hunter's daughter, his wife was so active, so active that he couldn't stand her. Uh, very tough life, very tough girl. That's the way she was happy because that's how people are, right? People in rural life. I know my, how, 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 uh, um, how dedicated my mother was. So I'm come from the country, Sri Lanka. I grew up uh, uh, watching, uh, of drinking uh, tea in candy, and in candy also it's not further uh, inland. So uh, I, I come from a village. I know uh, 
because when I was uh, lazy to go to school early morning and then she would wake uh, me up one day that time we didn't have pipeline water and then uh, she would take me to the well um, so that and then she would uh, and then uh, so that uh, she would uh, pour a few uh, buckets of water on me only then I would hardly open my eyes. <laughs> that was the kind of punishment that I had. I know how tough they are right? in good faith. Because so that Upaka couldn't stand his wife anymore because he was lazy, because he for many years he was a spiritual person, just uh, begging on uh, getting arms from people and meditating and all that. So that's why even today I know that Buddhist monks and priests from different religions. I know lots of Buddhist monk Catholic priests and priests from other religions and they they went back to their day life and it's funny that when they disturb by okay, uh, don't come back to me, then I, that's what I would say. And but I know for it they would ninety nine percent of them would come back. <laughs> Not to become monks or priests again. But as we complain. <laughs> right. So today, sorry, I told you. Uh, so that what happens was in the case of Upaka, one of them, then he got fed up and he he was sad about himself. And what he what he did was he finally left. He left his wife and now he was thinking where to go. All of a sudden he remembered that uh, that Buddha, the one who told him, okay, well, he said he he wasn't God. He wasn't just powerful supernatural being, he wasn't a demon, he wasn't a powerful yaksha or a demon, he wasn't, he wasn't even human, but he looked human, but he said he is a Buddha. But I, that's, I have so found him only one person by that name Buddha, I must go in search of him. And years later he came back to him, and located the Buddha and came back to him and became a monk, and meditated and uh, became an Aranat. So, 